So, again, welcome in. You have come by the 12 days of Christmas with Just Stamp. Today is day eight, and <clears throat> excuse me, we are creating a tabletop calendar that could be a gift for colleagues and teammates. So, a very simple easel construction. It'll fold down. You can store it into a <clears throat> mailing envelope or in a clear envelope and then it'll stay on the mantle or desktop all year long. So the little calendars, <clears throat> I might get some questions on that. They are made by Tailored Expressions. Every year I order my supply from Tailored Expressions. Um, they are very economically priced. I think you, they wind up being like maybe 50 cents a calendar. The website is tailoredexpressions.com and I love that they usually ship out within just a few days of my order and it's in my mailbox within the week. So those are the calendars I'm using. And these stamp sets and papers that I'm using, I'll share with you as I go along. The stamp set itself, oh, let me grab everything. The stamp set is one of my favorites. It is Ascending Smiles. It's got some beautiful daisies and the coordinating dies. And the paper that I'm coordinating with it is called A Wash in Beauty. It is from the annual catalog. And I'm using a couple of different patterns from the paper pack. So there we go. And let's see what else have I got. Let me bring out my supplies. I've got everything ready to go in a small silo envelope, which is what I'm going to slip the, the calendar in when I'm ready to gift it. So my construction starts with a piece of basic white thick cardstock, and I'm going to be scoring that a couple of times. I also need a piece of basic white thick cardstock that measures four inches by five and a quarter. I have two pieces of DSP from the A Wash and Beauty pack. One is the Blushing Bride, and I have run it through the cut and emboss machine using the 3D brick embossing folder. And then I also have a piece of the beautiful print, um, and you can get two. These are vertically <laughs> aligned on the 12 by 12, so you can get about six pieces of these, um, this pattern here. I also need a little bit of basic white for stamping, and I've gone ahead and done a little bit of die cutting in advance to prep. Of course, I need my calendar, and I need a small post-it note pack to put on the easel there. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is score. And I pre-scored my five and a half inch score. So right at five and a half. And then I'm also gonna pull it back and score again at two, and whoops, I'm gonna do it on the other side, at two and three quarters. So I need two, two scores and, whoops, almost cut it, need the scoring blade. So there you go. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. You can do a little bit of coordination or, or construction here. And I'm gonna fold on the five and a half and I'm also gonna fold on the two and three quarters. Just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and add my uh, DSP that goes down on the bottom or the inside and it measures just a quarter inch smaller than the Car the calendar base <laughs> and again the cool thing about these templates is you could apply them to the stamps you have on hand the papers you have on hand and gift in whatever theme you like so that gets centered right in there all right and then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and adhere my uh, blushing bride pattern paper which has been embossed 
embossed with the 3D brick embossing folder. And it's all flat adhered so far. Hello, Pam, welcome in. Today I am getting ready for some of the other gifts I'm giving out. <laughs> I'm working on gifts as I need them towards events. So I still have quite a few projects to do and I'm still gonna be sharing more projects with you. And I'm actually gonna be using ideas that were shared with me this past meeting at um, team time. So I'm kind of excited about that. I get to take some of the inspiration from our team time meeting and tweak it and make it my own. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna continue on constructing this just to eliminate it. I know, I'm glad to hear that, Pam. It's so inspiring to see other crafters and what they're doing and then make that idea your own. So what I'm doing here is I just flipped over. I'm gonna align this. This is gonna be the standing easel portion. I'm putting it in place of where I'm gonna adhere it. I'm not gonna put adhere, um, adhesive at the top, only at the bottom. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, and draw a line on where this is supposed to go. And so I know I can put adhesive below that line and I'll be safe. And that's gonna be added just like so. And this is Anna Marie's technique of constructing or crafting is to get rid of some of the pieces early on so that I don't lose them. Cause we all know how that works out right at my, in my hand sometimes and I'm losing things. So I've got that adhered and it is Tombow liquid glue that I'm using. So it just takes a little bit more time to, to dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my post-it note and I put a uh, tear and tape on the back. I'm gonna use my, one of my basic tools, my take your pick tool and remove the sticky off the back. And my tip is very gummy. I forget, oh, I was removing glue dots with this tip earlier today. So now it's sticky. So I have been enjoying every every craft I've been doing. I hope you enjoy them too. Um, as I said, I have more events that I'm planning for this weekend. So I've got more crafts to create and share with you. And then I'm just gonna make sure I've got this position the right orientation. I don't wanna apply my post-it notes. Now, this is going to go about a quarter inch from the bottom and then just uh, horizontally centered. It'll go right in there. There we go. So I have that in place. You can see how it's already coming together so easily. And now I'm gonna do some stamping and decorating. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna share with you, I said I was using the Sending Smile stamp set and I'm just using this two of the stems and three of the flowers to design. And I'm, the colors I've picked are Blushing Bride, Mary Merlot, and Early Espresso. So that's what I'm gonna be stamping with. And because I did a little bit of die cutting beforehand, oh yikes, I realize now I need my one of my ink pads that might be on another project. So here's what I'm doing. This is actually being organized for mass production. So I went ahead and stamped and die cut one. So now the rest are gonna be easy or not as time consuming. So I just went through the process of doing some die cuts. I'll put them right into position on the Stamparatus. The Stamparatus tool is perfect for mass production or perfect alignment. And then the one color I don't have out is for the stems and I'm using Old Olive for the stems here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and ink up. Put some of this aside. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my stamp set here and ink up. Ink up the stems. So this is gonna be simple. No die cutting since it was pre-die cut for mass production and it's already in position here. 
going to press down and I do have a tool for applying the pressure. I don't have it at the ready, so I'm just going to use my hands and then fingers crossed I got enough ink on there. And I think I do want them a little bit darker, so I'm going to do a second inking. And I'm going to come right back here. And these stems will be ready. There we go. So nice, perfect stems, easy, easily accomplished when it's set up on the Stamparatus. I'm going to move that aside as well as the old olive ink. And I'm going to stamp my flowers. And so this is a photopolymer stamp set. Everything has been pre mounted on my acrylic blocks. So I have the largest flower, the half flower, and the small flower. And then I have two flower centers. And this is a photopolymer stamp set. So what I'm doing is stamping on my spanking new piercing mat with my name on it. I love it. Okay, there we go. So I need a little piece of basic white. And I have a technique. We're going to do a little bit of um, rocking and rolling, or in my case, I'm going to use the dauber. So I'm going to start off by stamping in Blushing Bride, and I'll start with the biggest flower. And I'm going to bring in a dauber to add a little bit of shadowing with the Mary Merlot. So I'm using Blushing Bride and Mary Merlot, and the first thing I'm going to do is ink up in Blushing Bride, and then I'm going to add some Mary Merlot to the flower edges, so sometimes you have a little bit of var variation in the coloring. Just want to make sure I've got enough color on there, and I'll stamp down. And if I didn't, oh, I did, actually did. So I have a little bit of Blushing Bride, and then you can see the darker edges of the petals with the Mary Merlot, so I'm happy with that, actually. I'm gonna do the same thing for the Half Flower. So first with the Blushing Bride, and then a little bit of shadowing with the Mary Merlot. And you could rock and roll, but with the rocking and rolling, I found I got too much of a, a straight line. I wanted it um, blended in a little bit better. So I'm going to use my half stamp there. Then I need my final flower, the small little posy, and I'm going to do the same there. So using the dauber, you could also use a sponge just to add a little bit of color around the edges. And there we go. All right, there is the flower, and you're going to see the two the two tones with the blushing bride, and then the darker with the Mary Merlot. I'm going to add my flower centers in early espresso, and there are actually three different styles of flower centers. However, I'm going to share with you one of them is the tiniest little stamp here and since this is being set up for mass production I'm not going to use that stamp it comes off the acrylic block so easily I'm afraid it's going to get lost and so I'm just going to do the other two this is again is early espresso and you need just need to sometimes it's easier straight over top hopefully I've gotten a good spot there then I have the other flower center for the full flower. And for that tiny flower, I'm going to take my, I'm going to do, do a cheater. I'm going to take my stamp and write marker and just fill in that color. So it's a little bit darker than I would want it, but that's okay. There we go. So there are my three little posies. I'm going to go ahead and die cut those and I could do it with the mini it's just that I have my standard cut and emboss machine at the ready here 
and I'm going to use the dies that are in this set. I have, <laughs> I am paranoid about you losing these small things. So I put them in a little cello bag so they wouldn't get lost. I'm also going to be using a little bit of washi tape because my cutting plate even though it's only a few days old, it has already bowed. That tells me how much cutting I have been doing in the last couple days, that the cutting plate itself has already bowed. And the helper has even been flipping it to try and get a little more life out of it, but still. All right, then I have the posy. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Let me move that over a little bit. And the reason the washi tape is so helpful is because that top plate is bowed and it tends to make the dies shift as it cranks through. And I don't want them shifting. There we go. Now I'm ready to cut. So third cutting pat on top. So I love the idea of the annual calendars. There are so many versions and templates that you could use. This is a very simple one to construct not a lot of layers, not um, a lot of adhering. So clean and simple. And I'm gonna get my third flower. Right here, there we go. So I'm going to put my flowers together before I add it to my calendar base and I'm going to bring this in and kind of arrange it and it's sort of like flower arranging to see where you want it to go and let's see I'm going to bring this in right like so and let's see if I like my arrangement here So just like that. And if I like it, actually it might be easier if I shift it over to the paper, make sure I've got it spread out. All right, then I want this flower to kind of be almost peeking off the pattern paper. So there, this one's gonna come this direction. And this one will be over here. And just to confirm, oops, it's kind of upside down. Just to confirm, I'm gonna grab my calendar and make sure that in the clear here, it looks like it's okay. So I am going to get some glue dots and adhere this. And get my, take your pick. Get one mini glue dot at a time. And I am gonna put this right on the stem where I want one of the little flowers to go. Usually it's easier if I don't touch the glue, glue dot, but let's see, right in through here I did. There we go. And it's gonna be movable, so let's see. Right back in here. And they're a little bit bigger, that's why I'm trying to roll it. Bring this up this way. And then I'll have one more up. Right in here, I wanna marry these two little stems. So one kind of coming way out there. There we go, that's better. I'm gonna flip that over adhere that together
right move it right through there and then I have one more little flower to add on the edge let's do this let's go this way and add that small flower in position right in here now this little arrangement I do want it I want to add some height to it so I'm going to add my dimensionals and I'm going to add the dimensional right behind where they are um, secured there and I'm going to be generous with the supports and a little bit further I'm going to bring in some minis as well so that I have lots of support and even let's see way up here I do want a tiny bit for the stems as well. This is where I use the border of the dimensional sheet. So when I was in the classroom, these are the sorts of uh, treats or gifts I would give to my neighboring teachers and um, it was always heartwarming to walk into somebody's classroom and see it on their desktop late in the school year. So these these little gifts are appreciated and they're kept and usually will remind the recipient of you every time they look at it. And they get to use the post-it notes and use the reference calendar. So it's kind of a nice gift. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and secure this down right around there and apply a little bit of pressure. The calendar also has the tear and tape already pre-adhered um, on there. So I'm gonna add this or remove this, not add it. And come back in and I'm gonna go right over and I'll tell you a trick. I should, should have actually done it this a little bit differently because I want to make sure that the calendar is aligned with the post-it notes. So I want it kind of centered, make sure it's going in the right area. And this goes about an, a quarter of an inch from the base as well. There we go. And there is our calendar. One last thing, I hope I haven't lost it. It looks like maybe I have. I had a butterfly embellishment. Oh, there it is one of the little brass butterflies to put on here. And I'm just gonna add it right up here by the flower. There we go, hopefully. And there's our calendar, our easel back calendar with post-it notes and our 2023 mini tear off calendar. There we go, so, all ready to go and again, I would use the clear envelope to gift it. There we go. What do you think? Very simple. Um, you could put a greeting on here. There could be something to celebrate today, or I like it just kind of plain with a little floral image. You could do a cute image as well little dog or character in there. Uh, or you could tailor it to the gift uh, recipient. So just a few essential supplies and the basic tools to create another gift this holiday season. All right, my friends, <laughs> thank you, Pam. It is a thoughtful gift. And you know, when it's made from your heart, it's even more appreciated. So I'm enjoying making the gifts and I know the recipients will enjoy it too. All right, when you come back tomorrow, it will be day nine already, and I'll have another gift idea for you. Actually, I'm gonna have a packaging idea for you is tomorrow, so join me tomorrow at four for the ninth day of Christmas. Thank you for joining me.